Corinne, you're most welcome. Share with us the word of God, even as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Nicholas. And I bless the Lord for this beautiful opportunity that has been granted to me to minister the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Them that are seated, that are standing, you may be seated. <laughs> Amen. And uh, our Lord is good, even this beautiful, beautiful evening. And uh, as we are going to learn, even from him, we are instructed. And indeed, we bear fruit more and more. Hallelujah. Amen. And today we are not, we are, we are learning something that we have learned before. See, Paul, tell, Paul says that, these things that I have taught you, I will, I'm paraphrasing, I will continue to teach you, I will not, I will not get tired of teaching you these things, hallelujah, because they are of benefit to you. So the very things that you have learned, we will continue even in them, not to forget what you have learned, hallelujah, praise Jesus, amen. Yes, my name is Lorraine, even as it has been mentioned to us by our pastor. Lorraine Dalvin Wangani Meokoka, Yesu Ibuana. Amen. We'll go in the book of Galatians, chapter 4. Galatians, chapter 4. We'll start from verse 21. Galatians chapter 4 verse 21 says, Tell me, you who desire to be under law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that, Ab for it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave and one by a free woman. 23. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, the son of the free woman through promise. Now, this is an allegory. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She, she is Hagar, verse 25. Now, Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free. And she is our mother. Verse 27 says, For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one, who does not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in travail. For the children of the desolate, of the desolate one are many more than the children of her that is married. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, even as the word says, this is, just, this is an allegory showing us how, uh, how we are not under the law of Moses, but rather we are under the law that is of Christ Jesus, the law of spirit that gives life. And so our topic today is freedom from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So we are free from the law of sin and death. And so Christ has made us free and set us free from this which tormented us and has given us that which is everlasting. And that is the law of his spirit, which brings life. Amen. So as long as you're the believer of God and I believe, hallelujah, how many of us are believers here? Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord because all of us have, have, have obtained Christ Jesus in their lives. So meaning all of you are the believers. Uh, so it entails these things that have been spoken even in Galatians chapter 4 in accordance to, not accordance to the woman who is of slavery, Hagar, but the woman who is not of slavery, which continues in verse 28 to say, now we... Brethren, like Isaac, are children of promise. And when we see Isaac, Isaac was the, was the offspring of, of Sarah. And Sarah 
Sarah was the lady who was betrothed to Abraham as her legal wife, if I may use that word, because Hagar came as a by the way. Amen. So verse 29 says, but as at that time, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. So it is now. Praise Jesus. That them that are now in the law that is of liberty, the law of Christ Jesus, them that are in Christ still experience that which is of the law of Moses. Praise Jesus. If you do not give yourself to the word of God, you may experience that which is not of you. Amen. We have been, we have been saved and we have been made free from the law of sin and death. But yet, if the believer of Christ Jesus has not, understand their, has not understood their right standing with Christ Jesus, they may still continue to experience that which it is not theirs, that which does not pertain to them, but that which is long gone. Praise Jesus. But we glory in the Lord that even as we are taught the word of God, we do not experience that which is not ours, but we experience divinity. Hallelujah. That which is ours, that which, that which pertains to the child of promise, that which was spoken even through Isaac. Amen. But what does the scripture say? I'm in verse 30. What does the scripture say? Cast out the slave and her son. For the, slave, for the son of the slave shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So what does it mean? The law of the spirit of death, the law of the spirit of sin and death cannot go hand in hand or cannot be in the same place as the law of the spirit that gives life. And that is Christ Jesus. So as long as anyone is under the law of Moses, they can in no way be under the law of the spirit of God. Amen. And so because you have believed, you have been brought out of that which persecuted you and you have been brought into a new inheritance. Praise Jesus. So we continue in verse in verse 30, I'll repeat, but what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave and her son, for the son of the slave shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. Verse 31 says, so brethren, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. So brethren, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. Amen. Amen. So we are we are the we are the children of God. We are the children of Christ. We are the children of grace, which is truth. We are the children that have been brought out of darkness into light. We are the children of righteousness. You can speak those things concerning yourself because that is who you are. Hallelujah. Amen. So our freedom, even freedom pertaining to us, the believers, is living not under the burdensome obligations of the law of Moses, but under God's grace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the, the law was there, yes. It was there to bring us to Christ. So it was a pathway for us to be brought into Christ, meaning as long as we have been brought into Christ Jesus, there is no other trajectory to go back to that which had brought us to Christ. Because as much as the law was a direction for us to be led to Christ, the law was fulfilled and dealt with in Christ Jesus, making it of no use to them that have now obtained the real thing. And that is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So that was just a shadow. It was just a typology of what really was to come. The law was a typology or just an, a type of what was to come. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we go to uh, the book of James chapter 2.
the book of James chapter 2. Chapter 2 and verse 10 of James says, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point, for whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. Verse 11, For he who said, Do not commit adultery, also said, Do not kill. If you do not commit adultery but do kill, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy, yet mercy triumphs over judgment. Praise the name of the Lord. And my emphasis is on verse 10, which speaks and says, for whoever keeps the whole law, but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. And, uh, and this is not to cause fear to us, but rather to even glory in it. Because yes, no one was able to fulfill all the law and no one is able to fulfill all, even right now. But the reality or the good news is Christ, who is able to fulfill all, indeed fulfilled by coming in the form of flesh into the world. So he comes in the form of flesh, dwells among men, and after he, and as he dwells among men, he is persecuted, rejected, and those things which were prophesied earlier comes into fulfillment. So he dies, and we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. So he did not just take our sins upon himself, but rather he became it. He became sin itself so as to handle it very, very well. And because the wages of sin is death, he did it. He died. He became sin, so he had to die. There was no option for him. So by him dying, that is when he fulfilled the law. Hallelujah. For the law said, cursed is him who hangeth on a tree. And so he hanged himself on a tree. In, in, in our, when, we, when we are told of the story of Jesus in the word, it speaks of people crucifying him. But even as people crucified him, we know that they would not have been able to crucify him if it were not his will. Because he's God. He has the ability in himself not to die. But because he loved us, he let himself die. So he dies. He dies because he became sin. And him hanging himself on the tree, he became cursed. He became cast on our behalf because no man, no sinner would have died to pay for their sinfulness. So he dies, and by him dying, we are brought to life. Amen. So we died together with him when he resurrected. We resurrected together with him, and that was our blessedness. Praise Jesus. So we were blessed because Christ Jesus resurrected from the dead. So in you there, you are blessed. Amen. So blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Because Christ rose from the dead and he ascended on high. So you are blessed even as Christ Jesus is blessed. Praise Jesus. Amen. And so uh, because this law, because this law was to point one to their guiltiness, to point one to their guiltiness, and Christ has come to make us not guilty, but to set us free, meaning that everyone that has come to Christ has been set free. So it so means that they are not under these obligations of the laws of Moses, but rather they are, they are under Christ who gives life and truth. So then, 
who were, was the law written for if it was not written for us. Amen. First Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1, Paul writes to his son Timothy and says in verse, th- in, in verse 8, sorry, in verse 8, chapter 1, verse 8, first Timothy. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, immoral persons, sodomites, kidnappers, liars, perjurers, and, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. In accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God, with which I have been entrusted. So we are being uh, shown here who the law has been written for. Amen. So it says, if anyone uses it lawfully, yes, it is good. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just. So uh, in us to understand who are these that have been made just, or who are these that have been made not to go not to go by the laws that are that that are burdensome we have to know who is this the just man and we'll go to second corinthians which i've mentioned earlier second corinthians chapter 5 and we see who is this just person who needs not to Second Corinthians chapter 5. Chapter 5 and verse 21 of Second Corinthians says, this version says, for our sake he made him to be seen. First of all, let me start from verse 20 so that you can know who is this being spoken of. Verse 20 says, so we are ambassadors of Christ. God, is, God, he, God making his appeal through us. We beseech you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be seen who knew no sin. For our sake, he made him to be seen who knew no sin. So for, for our sake, God made him, Christ, who is spoken of in verse 20. God made him Christ, spoken of in verse 20, to be seen who knew no sin, meaning he had no interaction with sin. Amen. So so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So the father makes the son to be seen for us and because he has made the son to be seen for us, we are made the righteousness of God. In other words, the righteousness of God has to do with us having a right standing with God. A right standing, meaning that when Christ sees you, he sees you blameless, just as as he is. When Christ sees you, he sees you cleansed, even as he is. Because in your own, in your own doing, there is nowhere, uh, there is no place that you can make yourself cleansed. But in his own doing, because he became sin, you are now being made clean through himself. Hallelujah. So you are the righteousness of God. You have been made right or just as we have seen in first timothy chapter 1 and verse 8 you have been made just with god because of him making himself sin for our sake so in back in first timothy chapter 1 now i believe that you can be we can be able to tell who is this person who is being spoken of as just Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, do not be ashamed then of testifying to our Lord. Oh, sorry. First Timothy chapter 1. Yeah, verse, verse 8 says. First Timothy, I mean, second Timothy, sorry. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 8 says, now we know that the law is good. 
if anyone uses it lawfully. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just. The law is not laid down for the just. And we have established in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that you have been made right with God. Meaning that you have been made just with God. A person that is right with God is also just with him. Hallelujah. So you have been made just with, with the Lord Jesus, meaning that these things that are spoken of in verse 9, so is spoken of concerning you. Understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless. So as much as, as long as you're, you're just, meaning you're not lawless, you're not disobedient, because God took upon himself and he died on the cross so he he obeyed God Christ obeyed God so by that you also have obeyed God through believing in his obedience so you're not disobedient but obedient to God you're not ungodly because God who died on the cross is godly and you have believed him so you are godly and sinners, you're not a sinner. You have been made the righteousness of God as you have believed. And all these things that have been spoken of to Kiendelea do not pertain to the believer. Meaning that the law, the law spoken of here, the law of sin and death does not pertain to you. Praise Jesus. So if, if in any case or if you have ever felt condemned or guilty of the things that you have not achieved or the things that you have achieved even in accordance to the Ten Commandments or whatsoever those articles and ordinances of the, of the law that have been spoken of. You need not to be because Christ has died for you and has made you the righteousness of God and you are just in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we go to the book of Romans. The book of Romans in chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 verse 1 says, Do you not know, brethren, for I, for, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only during his life. Thus, a married woman is bound by law to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is discharged from the law concerning the husband. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Verse 4. Likewise, my brethren, you have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another to him who has raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God verse 4 says while we were in the flesh our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death but now we are discharged from the law dead to that which held us captive so that we serve not under the law not under the old written code, but in the new life of the spirit. Amen. Yeah, Paul, Paul explains the significance of the law using, using a husband and a wife. Uh, and he places it in a sense that if, if a husband and a wife are married, these people are held by that law which has made them together. Because this, these people are given a certificate, so it means that this certificate, or oh, yeah, that is which binds them. And so as much as they are bound together by that law, they do not, if the husband, if the wife 
if the husband dies, sorry, if the husband dies, the woman has a right to go on and marry another man. But as long as they are all together alive, the woman cannot, if the woman goes and marries another man, she's considered an adulteress. So it is in like manner that the law, which is the law of Moses or the law of the spirit of death and sin, of sin and death, died in Christ Jesus. When he came, he came to fulfill and deal away with it. So he fulfilled it and is no longer on the path of that person that so followed it and so has believed in Christ. So then they have been discharged from that law and they are now in touch with another person who is Christ Jesus because the law is now dead. Praise the name of the Lord. So verse 6 says, but now we are discharged from the law, dead to that which held us captive. So we are discharged because Christ Jesus, another husband, came and took us to himself. Amen. The one that we had before died, the Lord died, and now another has come to our rescue and he has taken us. So that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the spirit. That's why we are always reminded that if you want to know who you really are, look in the epistles because this is where the life and the spirit of God is being revealed. This is where the spirit of God has been made manifest to the saints so that they have written these epistles. So if you want to know who you are truly, look in the New Testament before you go even to the Old Testament, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So verse 7 says, what then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet, if it had not been for the law, I should not have known sin. So it was good. Hallelujah. And it is still, and it is still good to the unbelievers because it is the one that points them to Christ Jesus. Praise Jesus. When they look at their lives and see, amen. By no means, yet if it had not been for the law, I should not have known sin. I should not have known what it is. It is to covet. If the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, finding opportunity in the commandment, brought in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin, la sin lies dead. So sin is of no effect where there is no law. But because the law was sin, had effect, and it tormented man. But right now, because Christ has come and has fulfilled it, it should in no way torment the one that has been brought to Christ Jesus. And you are one of them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We go back to uh, the book of James. And now... The book of James. Still chapter 1. And now in verse 25. In verse 25, James chapter 1, chapter 1 and verse 25 says, But he who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty. So there is, there is this another so-called law, which is the law of liberty and not the law of sin and death. So it says, but he who looks, looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer, being no hearer that forgets, but a doer that acts, he shall be blessed in his doing. I'll repeat, but he who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer that forgets, but a doer that acts, he shall be blessed in his doing doing. So there is a perfect law which needs to be looked into. Amen. The law of sin and death was not perfect. It, it was not perfect. It had its, 
it had its uh, to spot spots. Amen. But the law of liberty is the perfect law. The law that, that is spoken of that when one perseveres in it and be and becomes not just the hearer but the doer of it, he shall be blessed in his doing. So the law, of, the law of liberty, which is the law that has been given in Christ Jesus, the law that brings grace and truth, is the one that has been given to the believer. And should the believer look into the law and continue it therein in the perfect law of liberty, he is blessed in all that he does. Amen. Amen. And uh, and before you reach in verse twenty five, we are told in verse in verse twenty four. Verse twenty four, or rather, let me start from verse twenty three. For if any anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who observes his himself in the natural who observes his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. And so verse 25 says, but he who looks into the perfect law of, the li of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer that forgets, but a doer that acts, he shall be established in his doing. So the perfect law of liberty gives us a reflection of who we are. Whatever things we see in Christ Jesus is the same things we ought to see in ourselves. Whatever things was was spoken of concerning Christ Jesus is the same thing that should be spoken of concerning ourselves. As Christ Jesus is the Prince of Peace, he has, he has given us his, that very nature, that we are the people who bear peace in us. That whenever we are, there is peace. He was a wonderful counselor. In you, there is wonderful counseling. Praise the name of the Lord. He's the everlasting father. In you, there is eternal life. So you live eternally because you have the everlasting father in you. And you can continue to speak of those things, how he is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. So because he's in you, the provider, you have all provision. Praise Jesus. So looking in the perfect law of liberty gives you the real identity of who you are. It is not that your national ID that gives you the real identity of who you are. In fact, but it's okay. When you look at that national ID and you look at yourself in the mirror. But when you look at the at the perfect law of liberty, you're able to see yourself vizuri. That is your real identification. Hallelujah. Amen. That is who you are. You are described in accordance to the law of the spirit that gives life. Praise the name of the Lord. So uh, back to the book of Galatians, even as we winding up Galatians. Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, O foolish Galatians who has bewitched you, before whose eyes, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by your acts of the law or by the hearing or by the hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun with the spirit? Are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so many things in vain? If it is really in vain, does he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by, the, or by hearing with faith? Verse 6, thus Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. 
So the righteousness that you have believed is because that you have obtained is because you believe just as Abraham believed. You also believed and you received it. You did not receive it by the works of the law or by what you are able to attain or what you did not you are not able to attain but to how you believed and to whom you believed and that is Christ Jesus. So you work out your salvation in Christ Jesus without fear knowing that it is him in whom you believed that has brought you into his likeness and that is his own righteousness. So you continue in the works which is believing. Amen. Because this is what brought you righteousness. You do not continue in the works that are of flesh, but the works that are of the Lord. Because the works of the flesh do not justify, but the works which is of God, and that is his work done on the cross, that which you believe is what justifies you and makes you whole and complete. Praise Jesus. So your faith avails much. Your faith avails much because it is not your own. It is from him. It is from God. It is from God. So it, is, it avails much. And whoever, it is impossible to please God without faith. But because you have pleased, because you have faith and it is his faith, you please him. In your believing. Hallelujah. So uh, Paul here is bringing to their attention to the Galatian church and describing them as false because how can you learn these things and forget them easily? That's why we are continuing to learn and learn and learn and learn so that we do not forget them easily, so that they are rooted in us, they are established in us, so that in any situation or circumstances, should any teacher or any minister of the word come and tell us something that is not that is not con that is contrary to what we have learned we should in no way stand and withstand the things that they write but stand even in the things that Christ has spoken to us so Paul tells them these things and uh, describes their state that they are indeed foolish because they think now they can be justified by the things that they have learned, not forgetting that it is Christ that is to be considered in all that they do. Hallelujah. Amen. And we'll finish with this one last verse. With this one last verse. In verse 23. In verse 23, the same book, Galatians chapter 3. Now, before faith came, we were confined under the law. Now, before faith came, we were confined under the law, kept under restraint until faith should be revealed. Now, before faith came, we were confined. Being confined is to, is to be subject or to be bound. So we were bound under the law, kept under under restraint, so we were restricted. Under it, we could not do anything but just work under its confines mm -hmm. until faith should be revealed. Verse 24. So that the law was so that the law was our custodian until Christ came. So it held us in custody. Ilitu, ilitu to himself. We could not have withdrawn ourselves from it. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God. These same people being, being, being called here in verse 1 foolish are the same people that are being spoken of as sons of God. All are all sons of God. So even in your foolishness or stupidity, PDT and see to can him to even in those things that maybe you may forget who you are in Christ Jesus and consider yourself as someone that you are not, even in that, God still calls you son. 
So he does not look at your iniquities. He does not look at your transgressions. He does not look at your shortcomings to describe you. But he looks at himself so as to describe you. He looks at the forgiveness that he has given unto you so as to describe you. For if it were for him to count our iniquities and our sins, no one could have stood because no one was able to save themselves or to die so as to save all humankind from their sins. But because he is God and he has died for you, he considers you sons of God through faith. So what makes us sons of God is the faith that has been given to us. We may forget the things that the Lord has done for us, but let your soul not forget them because you know who you are. Let your soul ever be reminded of the great things that the Lord has done. Let your soul ever be straight and uh, rooted in the things that the Lord has done so that you will not at any one moment consider yourself not a son because you're a son through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 27 says, For as many of you were for as many of you as were baptized into Christ. And you are told being baptized is to be fully immersed. So we have been fully immersed in Christ Jesus, having his own nature, bearing his own nature into Christ, have put on Christ. So you have put on Christ because of the baptism that you have received in him. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You bear only one spirit in Christ Jesus. All of you have the Holy Spirit. Amen. All of you bear his own spirit. So there is no male, there is no female, there is no Jew, there is no Gentile. That's why we are told, you no, I no longer regard you in accordance to the flesh, but in accordance to the Spirit of God. You are regarded in, the, in accordance to the Spirit of God because even Christ himself is no, is no longer regarded in the flesh. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Amen. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abram's offspring, heir according to promise. So everything that was spoken of as a promise to Abraham, they pertain to you because you are in Christ Jesus, bearing one spirit. Praise Jesus. So uh, that's why we are all equal in the sight of the Lord. No one of us is greater and no one of us is of less reputation in the eyes of the Lord. He has given us his, himself so as to consider each one of us as of importance as the other one. Because all of us has, have been made kings and have been made priests in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Even as we have learned... And I believe we have learned, amen. How many of us have learned? Amen. Glory unto Jesus. So we continue to even live in accordance to who we are. And that is in accordance to the law, which is of perfect, which is the perfect law of liberty. We focusing in it, we receive our justification, even at it, as it is already in us, we experience it. We experience our freedom. We experience our peace. We experience our joy. We experience all that has been spoken of in Christ Jesus concerning us. I bless you, Jesus. Lord, I speak even accord, in accordance to your word and even to the saints that are here, that Lord, even as they continue to speak and to meditate on the good things that Lord is spoken in you, they obtain and they experience your freedom, oh God. They experience it. It is being made manifest in all that they do. Your joy is made manifest in all that they do. And even as this year we have purpose to smile 
and smile. Lord, we smile. Not because we have been told to, but it comes naturally. Thank you, Jesus. Because we indeed have experienced our freedom. Just go on. Continue speaking your freedom in Christ Jesus because he has made you free. Free indeed. Free to the things that pertain to the spirit. Free to the things that pertain to Christ Jesus. Free to the things that pertain to his glory. Free to the things that pertain to his righteousness. Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. Indeed, you have made us free. And our hearts are free indeed. Our hearts are at peace. Our hearts are joyous in all situations, in all circumstances. Lord, we choose to give you praise. We choose to say thank you, oh God, because you teach us your word and you remind us. Your meditation is in our hearts, oh God. Your love is in our hearts. Your joy is in our hearts and we can continue to speak and speak and speak and declare of your goodness. Our lips not tiring, our lips not ceasing to speak of your goodness. Our lips not ceasing to just say indeed God you're good. Indeed, God, you're good. Indeed, God, you're good. And your goodness endures forever. That's why you have given us your mercy. That's why you have given us your grace. That's why you have given us your peace, your joy. All that is within you is within us, oh God. And we testify and proclaim of these very things to the praise and glory of your name. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're good. And there is none like you, oh Jesus. There is none like you. You receive all the praise. You receive all adoration. All honor belongs to you. Because you have loved us. And your praise will continually be on our lips. Thank you, Jesus. You have taught us and you continue teaching us all through. And it is you that enables us to continue fervently in the spirit without tiring. I bless you even for the supplications that we have made this day since we began our service until today. We know that they are answered because Lord you have taught us not to be anxious or worried of anything but to just make our requests known to you. Thank you, Jesus, for you answer us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.